Welcome back to the channel. If you're not subscribed, then simply welcome to the channel. Today's video is about Japanese denim. Is it worth the investment? Now, full disclosure, of course, like with everything regarding fashion or like any like hobby like this, very niche hobbies, it tends to get expensive. So it's not necessarily the cheapest thing to get into. And that's just in case you've never really looked into Japanese denim. Like if this is your first time ever getting into like Japanese denim or a video about denim in general, I would say it's probably not your first time. But for those of you who are actually seeing this type of information or consuming this information for the first time, it's definitely something that you have to invest into. Now I've mentioned this before in other videos, but I would assume that people mostly know if you're getting into Japanese clothes that the Japanese definitely have their own special techniques and special sort of like approach to most things and denim is definitely not an exception now like I said before it's gonna get expensive but why is it expensive well I think that's a big thing that we should talk about before we start spending money willy-nilly let's talk about what you get from Japanese denim when you do invest into it when you do decide to buy into Japanese denim well, for starters, what you're gonna get, obviously, is a good high quality pair of denim, but what exactly makes it high quality? Well, let's go ahead and get into the contents of what the denim is made of and a little bit of how it's made. Now, I did actually touch on these denim uh, or this pair of pants, this denim jeans, whatever you wanna call them before in a different video, but this video is aiming to go a little bit more in depth. So, like I said, we'll go ahead and talk about the denim and what it's made of. This denim is actually a pair of sugarcane denim from the brand Sugarcane, and this specific model is the Okinawa model. Um, pretty much what it is is 50% cotton and 50% sugarcane fibers. I myself have never had anything like this before. It's very interesting, and honestly, it was a selling point, and it tends to be a selling point for most people who get into this type of denim for the first time. Now, I assume the Okinawa name means that it's made on the island of Okinawa and so there are a little you know the reference here and there to the uh, origin of the denim or the place where the denim was made if you look on the back there's an Okinawa snakeskin patch and it's been painted over so as time sort of goes on it will eventually wear and tear um, and sort of reveal the actual nature of the snake skin and the scaling underneath it. Of course, this is not the natural color of the snake skin, but again, it's just a design choice. And I've heard the snakes were actually from Okinawa, and that's kind of that's kind of cool. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you're one of those cruelty-free like vegan people, it might kind of seem nuts but uh, for the rest of us I think that's a pretty cool selling point that the uh, actual snake skin patch are from Okinawa snakes on the actual island of Okinawa so those are the materials that the denim is composed of let's go into the making of the denim now technically this is a one wash denim which means that it's not completely raw essentially what that means is it's dyed it's you know woven into fabric it's cut uh, off that bolt and it is created then and there and there's no distressing or degradation methods used to make them look as if they were worn in essentially this is how all denim was made and uh, sold in stores fresh uh, from the loom uh, over a hundred years ago and they're pretty much recreating vintage at this point now a lot of these denim brands tend to buy into or kind of like rent or lease the availability or space to use um, a very old piece of equipment called a uh, denim shuttle loom and that essentially gives it the characteristics that you are probably seeing on camera the uh, slubbiness the sort of nippy nappy uneven sort of texture and then furthermore you're going to see a self edge or a selvage line which means that the end of the bolt of denim is actually finished off um, where it locks into each other and you get that little difference of color right there and that stitch line going down there and that assures you that it is selvage and again what selvage is is self-finished edges at the end of that bolt of fabric um, 
and that's what creates that sort of look and that's just a QC like a quality control method um, it's kind of just like an industry standard kind of always has been and what that means is that it won't fray it won't like unravel or whatever at the end because not only does it look sloppy but it's just not really a, a quality pair of denim if it just comes apart uh, you don't want it to look nasty or just kind of look uh, like unprofessional so that's just kind of an extra detail and the Japanese did not invent that but again they pay homage and, and sort of like recreate that because they respect it now furthermore like I said these are made on pretty old vintage uh, looms vintage equipment some of this old Levi's and Lee equipment um, some people take a different route where they don't actually use the vintage equipment but they kind of make it in an older way or even maybe traditional Japanese uh, methods of creating fabric and denim whatnot now kind of going along with the construction method and how it's made we can kind of look at some of the details while it's being made or after it's being made some of the finishing details they added to it again i've looked at this uh in depth i cannot tell what these are but uh, i think these are koi fish in the back um, of the pocket and the pocket is actually lined it looks pretty cool personally i've never seen uh, any other company or any pair of denim with a lined pocket um, you have these nickel i think they're nickel probably more like brass uh, rivets and buttons it's a button fly can't believe i skipped right over it but the sashiko design in the back i'm not quite sure what this is i couldn't find much information on it or maybe i didn't look hard enough if anyone does know let me know in the comment section below but i have no clue uh officially i do know that it is a pretty sick design and i do know that it is handmade uh the sick design part being my opinion but when I say handmade, I mean someone actually took the time to take a needle and actually sew this design into the pocket and they actually did this probably for untold amounts of denim. But even that being said, even though it sounds like kind of like a lot of denim because like they sell a lot of denim around the world or whatever, it's actually in a relatively small batch. You'll actually find that it's more difficult to track down denim like this, um, this specific uh, model from the specific brand. Um, a lot of Japanese brands tend not to serve up their creations outside of Japan and when they do it's like with high import costs and, and kind of only select retailers so yeah they have got they've got enough to keep their storefront going but it's actually comparatively like not that many pairs around uh, compared to like Levi's and whatnot plus they're competing with other Japanese brands that do the same thing in their own ways of course so you're actually going to get a pretty limited pair at the end of the day and all that of course does drive up the cost so again like I said it's not a cheap you know sort of hobby to get into but I think it is well worth the investment there's yet one more detail to speak of and that is the uh, sashiko pockets on the inside which are blue I'm not quite sure why they use blue or why they did the sashiko on the inside of the pockets but it is a really cool dope detail and sashiko for those of you guys who don't know is a traditional Japanese sort of like artistic way of sewing like a, a traditional design choice I'm pretty sure there is some functionality to it uh, back in the day but I think nowadays you really see it more in fashion as a like sort of design choice but anywho for whatever reason they decided to go with that and it does look sick the reason why I mentioned some of these design choices and some of these construction choices is because I have to note that they tend to pay homage to Japanese style Japanese sensibilities and Japanese way of doing things while also simultaneously paying respect to whatever reference point they're coming from so I think we should kind of look at it less as appropriation and just more of paying homage and more of like a respect thing because they actually do kind of go that extra mile I shouldn't even say kind of they actually do go that extra mile to do whatever they're doing to the most like specific standards to make sure that they're doing it correctly make sure they're doing it to the best of their ability and to the highest quality but also again to pay respect to whatever they're trying to reference and one thing i want to know is that these jeans actually do um, stretch quite a bit they did stretch about half a size 
Um, I got a bigger size, like a 38 when I wear a 36 normally, um, because I'm thinking that like one wash and raw denim, even though we say one wash raw, they're honestly kind of the same as far as the way they feel. They're supposed to be, you know, a little bit softer, easier to get into when they're one wash. Um, but honestly, I found that that's not really the case for me and my own experience. You know, I'll let you have your own experience with that and you can kind of tell me how you feel or if you already have these jeans or whatever, you can tell me how you feel about it. But I feel as though that that never really does much for me. Uh, so it's pretty stiff. That being said, I tried to size up, but uh, that actually ended up stretching quite a bit. And now I feel like I need a belt. I'm never going to tell you to size down, especially in raw and one wash denim. But I would definitely say uh, try these on in the store and maybe ask a little bit about these denim. Uh, again, don't size down, but at least go true to size on these. Um, they tend to fit a tad bit more loose than most Japanese brands, which is pretty nice. Uh, but again, they will probably stretch up to a half a size, if not a full size, depending on what you're doing, range of motion, and all that. That being said, it's nothing a belt can't really fix. I would definitely say grab a belt if they do end up getting too big. But at the end of the day, I'd rather get something a little bit too big than get it a little too small. You can always go to a tailor and get it permanently fixed. Um, but again, that's up to you. I like mine to fit a bit more loose if they're gonna fit off at all. Bigger is better than smaller. Now, as far as pricing goes, it's going to be a little bit more than what most people want to spend on a pair of jeans, but understand all the stuff that I mentioned before uh, means you're going to get a little bit more out of it than your standard run of the mill pair of jeans. Officially, the price that I pay was about $309 after tax, um, but they do actually range depending on what store you're getting them from. And actually, on the sugarcane website, they tend to be a little bit higher. I saw them around like four or something. So I don't know where you live or where you could possibly go to to get these in person, but just understand the price is going to vary. Again, I paid around three oh nine for mine after tax. And if you do have the opportunity to go to Japan, I think they retail around like two eighty something. Now, all that being said, is this a quality pair of denim? Absolutely. Um, there are definitely Japanese brands. These, this is like my maybe like third pair of Japanese uh, selvage denim. Um, not all of them were made in Japan. Lots of brands do selvage and they do like raw denim. Uh, Naked and Famous and APC being two of the more affordable brands that do that. Um, however, they're not made in Japan and they don't have some of the same design sensibilities. Now, they're not any less quality. They're definitely great high quality denim. Uh, the petite standard, new petite standard from ABC, and the uh, Naked and Famous, uh, various models of Naked and Famous, uh, almost all of them in some way, shape, or form uh, use Japanese denim or raw denim uh, or Japanese raw denim. But I would say they're a bit more cheap uh, or as far as, you know, comparison to Japanese brands, um, but not cheap by any means. It can, it can run you around 184 up to like 250 depending on what type of jean, what model and whatnot you're going to get. But those two brands are based in the West, Canada, and I think Europe for APC would be France. Um, but it's actually a bit cheaper to get things from France, it seems, uh, than Japan. For some reason, I guess the, the tariffs or taxes are different. So they definitely make their denim in a different way. Um, the Japanese or like older school, like recreation vintage brands, they tend to make a much, much slower pair of jeans. Um, they get a specific type of look from that, but again, it's super slow. Compared to APC, Naked and Famous, and like nudie jeans and whatnot, they probably use a bit more of a modern technique to make it, which doesn't make them worse quality. It just, again, simply doesn't give it the same sort of look and feel as the Japanese or like recreation brands. But yeah, that's all I really have to say about these. Um, if you have any more questions or anything you want to ask me in the comments, definitely let me know. This is going to be a bit of a shorter video today, but hopefully you guys got some good info. Um, if you learn anything, let me know. If you have any more questions, again, comment section. Follow me on social media. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great one.